gang, Tony here, doing something a little special today, and that is a short reading from the upcoming novel, my upcoming novel, uh, Tommy and the Order of Cosmic Champions. This was, um, this is the ARC. I'm going to read chapter, uh, part two, chapter two, which is actually just the second chapter in the entire novel. And in fact, if you don't count the prologue, this is the first, like, official chapter. So I wanted to start early in the novel so that I'm not giving too much away. And also because I'm probably going to do a couple of other readings over the course of the next few months. This does not come out until October 18th, so we still have a few months away for this. Um, so, you know, figured I'd slow play it a little bit and maybe do some other readings as we get closer to the release date. So this is a pretty short chapter. Um, my patrons, uh, my, the Patreon members for my Patreon page that I just launched, will be getting early access to this video, and then eventually it'll show up on my YouTube channel as well. Alright? Um, I think that was all of the introduction I was going to do. I'm actually not going to read it out of the book. I have a PDF set up here to make it a little bit easier on my eyes, but um, the chapter is entitled, School's Out. Chapter 2, School's Out. Time had stopped. That was the only reasonable explanation for Tommy Grant's continued imprisonment behind the wooden school desk, its surface etched with lamentations. He read them for the thousandth time. Tony rules. I'm sick with Pac-mania. School food sucks. Tammy toots. He ran his fingers over the peace signs and hearts, wishing for an end to the drudgery. No other day had ever been as long. Tommy dispensed with courtesy and peered over his shoulder to steal a glance at the time. The round clock mounted on the back wall was surely a cruel joke set upon the students, ensuring swift punishment for anyone brazen enough to check during class. But this wasn't any regular day, and the teacher's scorn held no sway over Tommy. This, after all, was the last day of elementary school. What could old Miss Tither possibly do? As soon as the bell rang, he'd be gone from that place and he'd never look back. Mrs. Tither could scream and threaten a trip to the principal's office all she wanted. None of it would matter. Tommy's bravery paid off as he discovered only five minutes remained in his tenure at Golden Pines Elementary. The teacher didn't even glance his way, which was weird for old Mrs. Tither, withered Tither, as she was referred to in hushed tones around the playground, who was usually ever vigilant. So much as an implied note pass was known to set her flying into an almost comical rage, her floral dress spinning around her wide frame like a helicopter propeller, her face twisted into a flushed mask of indignity, deepening the creases and crevices of wrinkles as if to prove she was actually withering away before their eyes. A worn copy of To Kill a Mockingbird word in the VCR, though no one paid the stuttering picture much mind. There had been rumors leading up to the last day that some teachers would show the Karate Kid. Other students claimed that they'd get to see Flight of the Navigator. Tommy dug those kinds of movies, the ones like Goonies, Explorer, Stand By Me. There was a new one he'd been dying to see called The Monster Squad, but he'd have to wait until movie night for that. Now even withered Tither was checking her wristwatch. Time had grown short indeed. A quick check over his shoulder confirmed, yes, less than a minute now. The other students around him became shifty in their seats. Lauren R. straightened her books into a neat pile. Tommy's best friend, Evan Winger, groaned audibly as he tapped his desk. The movie whirred on, ignorant of the student's disinterest. Settle. Mrs. Tither peered over her glasses, a stern disciplinarian to the end. Settle now, or I'll hold you after. Could she actually do that? Tommy looked at Evan, whose face lost all color. His mouth hung open. Other students gazed at each other questioningly, but no one had the guts to defy Mrs. Tither's order and risk having to remain in the chalk-dust-covered room a moment longer than necessary. Enough of Atticus Finch. Enough of math and English. And as the prophetic rhyme said... No more teachers' dirty looks. What else could they do with mere seconds left? They settled. They quieted. They tamped down all the joy and exuberance and excitement, down, down, down to the bottom of their stomachs as the seconds ticked closer to 2.25. Silence until the second hand found its home and the bell rang. 
Tommy's stomach lurched, ready to spew anticipation like a, a shaken bottle of soda. But Mrs. Tither, that withered witch, she had one last trick. She held a finger up, as she had so many times before. Wait. Evan shot an expression of unbridled shock at Tommy. But the bell had rung. This was the last day of elementary school, and Summer waited outside like an idling ice cream truck. Where children once sat, only mannequins remained. No one dared move a muscle or speak or question. Mrs. Tither continued to hold her finger in the air like a dictator brandishing some glorious blade of triumph. Her gaze held satisfaction, authority, and yes, a smidgen of malice. Tommy long suspected withered Tither hated children, and this last moment with her confirmed it. Tommy's mother had once referred to his teacher as a school marm, and that word returned to him as he sat stationary, praying for Mrs. Tither to lower her dreaded in index figure, finger, which had been imbued with such power that a single gesture could hold a classroom of children in their seats. What wizardry! What witchcraft! This raised finger alone could cease invading armies, but she instead used her power against innocent children wishing for parks and bike rides, ice cream, and pools. Her expression shifted and became villainous, a sneer quivering on her red-painted lips, revealing teeth stained yellow from nicotine. Her eyes squinted as she gazed upon what Tommy assumed was her most satisfying plaything, a classroom filled with hopeful children. The enormity of that moment weighed upon young Tommy's mind, as if for the first time in his short life he understood the secret intentions of adults. With her finger still stabbing the air, she said, I expect you'd like to leave now. Outside the cheers and exclamations of luckier students rose into the air, clean air like balloons on the wind. Mrs. Tither gestured to, a row of, to the row of windows and shook her head. Go on then, join your friends. A smile teased at her lips. Have a wonderful summer and promise me you will savor every moment. She lowered her finger as her expression shifted one last time to something Tommy couldn't quite identify. Something sad and lonely. But he was only 11 years old, and even though he reconsidered his earlier judgment of Mrs. Tither, he thought his, the thought was immediately drowned out by his uproarious classmates leaping from their seats as if they were on fire. Sammy C. patted his shoulder and said, See you at the new school, Lauren R. and Howard L., waved on their way out through the door. There were goodbyes and sayonaras, and they, they blended together in a uh, miasma of excitement. Tommy grabbed his backpack and headed for the door where he expected Evan to be waiting, but his best friend had left him behind. His stomach twisted. Why did Evan leave without me? They had so much to talk about. What were they going to do on their first day of summer? Where would they explore? What games would they play? But he was gone, and without so much as a word. The hallways were crowded with bustling children he headed to the buses or parents' cars. Some lucky few lived within walking distance as fifth graders were allowed to go home on their own. A strange sensation descended on Tommy as he made his way to the front door. A bad kind of itch, somewhere between his heart and his stomach. This would be the last time he walked these hallways. The last time he sat through a class with Mrs. Tither. No more lunches in the cafeteria that smelled of warming trays and disinfectant. No more gym class with Coach Marvin. No more field days, book fairs, or ho a hallway Halloween. In the weeks leading up to this last day of elementary school, all of those notions had seemed like blessings. But now, as he left the building he'd occupied for five years, these ideas became awful. Would he even have classes with Evan anymore? A sadness for the end of school he never thought possible descended upon him, and it flopped around his guts like a dying fish. Deep down, he feared these notions were an omen of things to come. And so ends chapter two of part two of Tommy and the Order of Cosmic Champions. I hope you enjoyed um, I'm, I'm messing around with the, uh, the program I'm using to record this, and everything looks weird. What happened? 
Uh, hopefully it's still recording. Um, so I will be back with more readings that hopefully aren't quite as botched as the one I just did. Uh, that was, of course, just a little bit of an introduction, just getting started. Some great things happen here. Uh, some fantastical things happen. I will uh, see you all soon. Until then, breathe deep of the night. And you know what? I am... Haha! There it is. I'm going to stop the recording now. See you all soon.